Most theories about human evolution focus on tools, fire, and language, the obvious technological leaps that separated us from other primates. Archaeological sites reveal stone axes growing more sophisticated over millennia, charred bones marking humanity's mastery of flame, and cave art suggesting the emergence of symbolic thought. But what if the most crucial encounter happened when a hungry hominin reached for something small and golden, growing from fresh dung? The stoned ape hypothesis suggests that psychedelic mushrooms alter consciousness and may have catalyzed the very traits that made us human, triggering changes in perception, social bonding, and creative thinking that no stone tool or controlled fire could achieve. Two million years ago, Africa's climate was rewriting the rules of survival. Forests that had sheltered our ancestors for millennia were shrinking, replaced by vast grasslands dotted with acacia trees. This wasn't a gradual transition. Geological evidence shows these changes happened in waves, forcing entire lineages to adapt or vanish. Homo erectus found themselves in an alien landscape. Gone were the familiar fruit trees and leafy canopies. In their place stretched endless savannas, where massive herds thundered across the plains. These weren't just any herbivores. We're talking about giant buffalo with six-foot horn spans, elephant ancestors twice the size of modern species, and antelope that moved in formations, stretching beyond the horizon. The cognitive demands were staggering. Forest foraging had required memorizing fruit seasons and recognizing poisonous plants. Savannah survival demanded tracking animal movements across vast distances, predicting weather patterns, and coordinating hunts with unprecedented precision. The hominin brain was about to face selective pressures unlike anything in its evolutionary history. But the savannah ecosystem held a secret ingredient that no evolutionary biologist had considered until ethnobotanist Terence McKenna proposed his radical theory in 1992. Those massive herbivore herds weren't just changing the landscape, they were fertilizing it with something extraordinary. Fresh dung attracts flies within minutes, but it takes days for certain fungi to establish their colonies. Psilocybe cubensis thrives in this narrow window, sending up small, golden-capped mushrooms that shimmer in the morning light. For a hungry Homo erectus, these weren't mysterious psychoactive substances. They were potential calories in a harsh environment where every food source mattered. The archaeological record shows that early hominins were methodical experimenters. They tested everything, bitter tubers that required days of processing, toxic nuts that needed specific preparation methods, even termites that they learned to harvest by breaking into massive mounds. This wasn't reckless behavior. It was systematic ecological science driven by survival necessity. Homo erectus bands would have followed the great herds for weeks, scavenging kills and collecting whatever edible materials appeared along migration routes. The dung fields represented renewable resources, and curious hominins would have investigated every fungal growth, learning through trial and error which varieties were safe. McKenna's insight centered on this repeated exposure. Unlike a single accidental encounter, the ecological relationship between hominins and these mushrooms would have persisted for hundreds of thousands of years. Every generation would have rediscovered the same species growing in the same context creating opportunities for cultural transmission of knowledge about their effects. The neurological responses would have been dose-dependent, creating a natural progression of discovery. Small amounts consumed accidentally during regular foraging would have produced subtle effects that enhanced rather than impaired survival abilities. Only after establishing baseline tolerance would larger doses have revealed the mushroom's more profound properties. Modern neuroscience has identified three distinct response levels to psilocybin that align remarkably with McKenna's evolutionary framework. Low doses enhance edge detection in human vision by up to 15%, a subtle but significant advantage for spotting predators or prey across open grasslands. For early hominins navigating the savanna's dangers, this represented the difference between life and death. At moderate doses, psilocybin produces its most socially relevant effects, the compound reduces activity in brain regions responsible for social anxiety and dominance hierarchies, while increasing empathy and emotional connection. Traditional primate societies operate through rigid power structures maintained by aggression and intimidation. Psilocybin's influence would have temporarily dissolved these barriers, promoting cooperative behaviors that benefited the entire group. Archaeological evidence suggests that Homo erectus social structures were already more collaborative than their predecessors, with evidence of food sharing, cooperative child rearing, and group defense strategies. The neurochemical basis for this cooperation may have originated in mushroom-mediated bonding experiences that enhanced group cohesion beyond what natural selection alone could achieve. High doses trigger the phenomenon modern researchers call 
ego dissolution, the temporary breakdown of the boundary between self and environment. For early hominins experiencing this state, the psychological impact would have been transformative. The normal sense of being an isolated individual competing for resources would dissolve into feelings of profound connection with the natural world. These experiences would have provided the neurological foundation for abstract thought, symbolic representation, and spiritual concepts. The visions and emotional insights generated during high-dose experiences would have required new forms of communication to describe and share with others who hadn't undergone the experience themselves. McKenna proposed that this pressure to communicate ineffable experiences drove the development of language beyond simple alarm calls and food signals. The need to describe complex internal states would have accelerated the evolution of syntax, metaphor, and symbolic thinking that distinguishes human communication from other primate vocalizations. As human populations migrated out of Africa, they encountered psychoactive fungi on every continent. Psilocybe semilanceata thrives in the grassy meadows of Europe. Psilocybe azurescens and psilocybe cyanescens grow in the wood-rich environments of North America's Pacific Northwest. The genus Panaeolus appears worldwide in grasslands frequented by grazing animals. This global distribution means that the hominin-mushroom relationship wasn't limited to a single African encounter. Each migration into new territories would have led to rediscovery of psychoactive species, reinforcing cultural knowledge, and expanding the repertoire of consciousness-altering substances available to different populations. The archaeological timeline supports this pattern. The earliest evidence of symbolic behavior appears around 100,000 years ago in Africa, coinciding with the emergence of Homo sapiens. But the explosive development of cave art, carved figurines, and complex burial practices doesn't appear until 40,000 years ago in Europe, precisely when modern humans were encountering new ecosystems and their associated fungi. Rock art sites from this period show consistent patterns across vast geographical distances. The famous cave paintings of Lascaux and Chauvet contain abstract symbols that modern researchers have identified as entoptic phenomena, visual patterns generated by the human nervous system during altered states of consciousness. Dots, zigzags, grids, and spirals appear with remarkable consistency in Paleolithic art from Spain to Australia. These patterns aren't random decorations. Neurological studies of modern psilocybin users show that the same geometric forms appear consistently during psychedelic experiences generated by the architecture of the visual cortex itself. The cave artists may have been recording what they observed during chemically induced trance states. The Upper Paleolithic explosion of artistic activity remains one of archaeology's greatest mysteries. Within a relatively brief span of 30,000 years, humans transitioned from producing simple stone tools to creating sophisticated paintings, sculptures, and musical instruments that rival modern artistic achievements in their complexity and emotional power. Traditional explanations focus on cognitive developments that occurred during this period, the emergence of fully modern language, improved toolmaking techniques, and more sophisticated social organization. But these theories struggle to explain the consistent presence of certain motifs and themes across widely separated cultures. The Tassili Najer rock art of Algeria provides the most direct potential evidence. Dating to approximately 7,000 to 9,000 BCE, these paintings include a figure often called the Mushroom Man, a human form whose body appears covered in mushroom-like growths, holding what may be a fungal specimen. Lines radiate from the mushrooms toward the figure's head, suggesting a transfer of power or consciousness. While interpretations of this image remain debated, similar themes appear throughout Paleolithic art. The famous sorcerer of Trois Frères combines human and animal features in ways that correspond to experiences reported by modern shamanic practitioners using psychedelic substances. These therianthropes, beings that are part human, part animal, represent a fundamental alteration of normal perception, where boundaries between different categories of existence become fluid. The entoptic patterns found alongside representative cave art provide additional support for the altered consciousness hypothesis. Modern neuroscience has demonstrated that identical patterns emerge during psilocybin experiences, generated by the way the drug affects visual processing in the brain. Cave art also reveals a sophisticated understanding of acoustics and spatial relationships that suggests the sites themselves were chosen for their consciousness-altering properties. Many decorated caves produce powerful echoes and contain areas where sound resonates in specific ways. 
Combined with flickering firelight and possibly psychoactive smoke, these environments would have intensified any neurochemical effects from consumed mushrooms. The artistic sophistication evident in sites like Chauvet, dated to 36,000 years ago, challenges assumptions about the gradual development of human creativity. Modern neuroscience has identified the specific mechanisms through which psilocybin affects human consciousness. The compound targets serotonin receptors throughout the brain, but its most significant impact occurs in a network of regions called the default mode network. This system maintains our sense of self, personal narrative, and boundary between internal experience and external reality. Under normal conditions, the default mode network acts as consciousness's editor, filtering perceptions and memories to maintain a coherent sense of identity. Psilocybin dramatically reduces default mode network activity, while simultaneously increasing communication between brain regions that normally operate independently. The result is a state of heightened neural connectivity, where sensory, emotional, and memory systems interact in novel ways. Users experience synesthesia, the blending of senses where sounds become visible or colors have textures. This hyperconnected brain state corresponds directly to the cognitive flexibility that McKenna proposed would be evolutionarily advantageous. Problems that seemed intractable under normal consciousness become approachable from entirely new angles. Social conflicts that appeared insurmountable dissolve when the ego structures maintaining them temporarily disappear. Brain imaging studies show that psilocybin promotes the growth of new neural connections and strengthens existing pathways associated with learning and memory. These structural changes persist for weeks after a single dose, suggesting that even occasional exposure could have long-term cognitive benefits. The compound appears to reset dysfunctional thought patterns by temporarily disrupting the neural circuits that maintain them. For early humans dealing with the psychological stress of rapid environmental change, similar effects could have enhanced psychological resilience and adaptability. While chimpanzees and bonobos show limited capacity for altruism toward non-relatives, human societies routinely organize around principles of mutual aid and shared resources among genetically unrelated individuals. Academic paleoanthropology has largely ignored or dismissed McKenna's hypothesis, viewing it as speculative storytelling rather than scientific theory. The criticism centers on the absence of falsifiable predictions and testable evidence that could distinguish the mushroom theory from alternative explanations for human brain evolution. The established framework for human cognitive development rests on three well-documented selective pressures that required no external chemical catalyst. The transition to meat-rich diets provided the metabolic energy necessary to support larger, more expensive brains. Archaeological evidence shows a clear progression in tool complexity that demanded increasingly sophisticated motor skills and planning abilities. Social group sizes expanded dramatically during this period, requiring enhanced memory and reasoning capabilities to track complex relationships and alliances. These factors create a feedback loop that explains human brain expansion without requiring additional variables. The archaeological record documents each step of this progression through stone tool assemblages, butchery sites, and evidence of cooperative behavior. The timeline poses additional challenges for the mushroom hypothesis. Brain size increases occurred gradually over hundreds of thousands of years, while the cognitive explosion evident in Upper Paleolithic art happened relatively suddenly. If psilocybin were driving brain evolution, we would expect to see more consistent rates of change corresponding to continuous exposure rather than punctuated bursts of development. Genetic studies of modern human populations show no evidence of selection for enhanced sensitivity to psychoactive compounds or improved ability to metabolize psilocybin. If mushroom consumption had been a major evolutionary force, we would expect to find genetic adaptations that optimize these neurochemical interactions across human populations. The dosage problem remains unresolved. Psilocybin's effects are highly dose-dependent, with therapeutic doses separated from potentially dangerous ones by narrow margins. Accidental overconsumption could lead to disorientation, panic responses, or risky behavior that would reduce rather than enhance survival prospects. The transition from random ingestion to controlled beneficial use requires cultural knowledge that itself needs evolutionary explanation. Critics also point out that other species encounter the same fungi without developing human-like consciousness. African elephants, primates, and various ungulates consume psychoactive plants regularly without showing evidence of enhanced cognitive abilities or symbolic behavior. 
If the mushrooms were sufficient to trigger consciousness evolution, we would expect to see similar developments in other species. The mushroom hypothesis suffers from archaeology's fundamental limitation. Organic materials rarely survive geological timescales. Fungi decompose within days under normal conditions, leaving no direct fossil evidence of their ancient presence or consumption. Unlike stone tools or processed bones, psychoactive mushrooms cannot be definitively linked to specific hominin behaviors through traditional archaeological methods. However, the absence of direct evidence doesn't necessarily invalidate the theory. Many accepted aspects of human evolution, including the development of language, the emergence of symbolic thinking, and the origins of spiritual beliefs, also lack direct archaeological support but are inferred from circumstantial evidence and comparative studies. The ethnographic record provides the strongest support for deep-time human-fungi relationships. Indigenous cultures across six continents have maintained sophisticated traditions of mushroom use for spiritual and healing purposes. The Mazatec people of Mexico preserved knowledge of the psilocybe ceremonies for over 500 years, despite colonial suppression. Siberian shamans developed complex rituals around Amanita muscaria consumption that may represent some of humanity's oldest spiritual practices. These traditions show remarkable consistency in their methods, beliefs, and reported experiences, despite developing in geographic isolation. The universality of shamanic practices involving consciousness-altering substances suggests either common origins or convergent cultural evolution driven by similar neurochemical discoveries. Archaeological evidence, while indirect, provides intriguing correlations. The appearance of abstract art, burial rituals, and symbolic artifacts coincides with human expansion into regions rich in psychoactive flora. The sophisticated acoustic properties of decorated caves suggest deliberate selection of spaces that would enhance altered consciousness experiences through sound and sensory effects. Genetic studies reveal that humans possess neurochemical systems highly responsive to plant-based psychoactive compounds. Our serotonin receptors show particular sensitivity to psilocybin and related molecules, suggesting either evolutionary adaptation to these substances or fortuitous compatibility that early humans could have exploited. The chemical signature of ancient psychoactive use may eventually be detectable through improved analytical techniques. Researchers have successfully identified nicotine residues in thousand-year-old pipes and cocaine traces in Egyptian mummies. Similar methods might eventually reveal psilocybin metabolites in well-preserved human remains from prehistoric contexts. Modern DNA analysis of ancient coprolites, fossilized feces, has revealed detailed information about prehistoric diets, including plant species that don't preserve as macroscopic remains. Future studies might identify psychoactive fungal DNA in hominin waste deposits, providing direct evidence of consumption patterns. Contemporary neuroscience research has unexpectedly converged on many of McKenna's core insights about psilocybin's effects on human consciousness. Clinical studies at institutions like Imperial College London and Johns Hopkins University have validated the compound's ability to enhance creativity, reduce depression, and promote feelings of interconnectedness with precisely the mechanisms the stoned ape hypothesis predicted. The default mode network, unknown when McKenna first proposed his theory, has emerged as the neurological structure most affected by psychedelic compounds. Its role in maintaining ego boundaries and filtering consciousness aligns perfectly with descriptions of mushroom experiences across cultures and centuries. From Paleolithic cave painters to modern neuroscientists, humans have repeatedly discovered that certain fungi possess the remarkable ability to alter perception, enhance empathy, and provide access to states of awareness that feel fundamentally different from ordinary experience. The stoned ape hypothesis may never achieve scientific consensus. Still, it has succeeded in highlighting the complex relationships between human consciousness, brain chemistry, and environmental factors that mainstream evolutionary theory often overlooks. In raising questions about the role of psychoactive substances in human development, McKenna opened new avenues for understanding how our ancestors became the introspective, creative, and spiritually oriented species we recognize today. The mushrooms themselves remain unchanged, small, golden-capped fungi growing in dung across the world's grasslands. But our understanding of their potential significance continues to evolve as neuroscience reveals the sophisticated ways they interact with human consciousness. Perhaps our ancestors discovered something about the nature of the mind that we are only now beginning to appreciate through the tools of modern science.